Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. It is a very hot day out there today. Heat index is well into the 100s. High humidity, high heat. If you have to be out working or outside much, please take care of yourselves. Please stay hydrated. Um, stay indoors as much as you can. If you're in a home that doesn't have air conditioning or is, is inadequately cooled, or you simply can't get yourself cooled down, please contact us. We can get you into the church. It's cool in there, and it would help you get through at least the hottest parts of the day. Just a couple of announcements. A reminder that our children have all pretty much gone back to school. Each school district is doing a variation of plans. No one district is doing the exact same thing as the other, and they're all doing what they think is best. We want to certainly be in prayer for our students as they are facing an uncertain time with whether or not the virus will spike among the schools. We pray that it won't. We pray for safety for the kids and for the staff uh, so that all people are kept healthy and free from harm from the pandemic. We also want to remind you of worship services this coming Sunday at 1st at 8.30 and St. Paul's at 10.30. Services will be live streamed as well as posted uh, later online both on Facebook and on YouTube. Those are the announcements I want to touch on today. I do want to talk with you today about a very difficult topic, one that is very fresh and very painful. Many people in Garnavillo and perhaps a wider area know that on Sunday afternoon, Tracy Wurgis of this community took his own life. That is a shocking thing to hear. It is a shocking thing to experience. The family, who really had no idea that this was coming, are understandably devastated. It is always hard to deal with the death of someone we know and love. It is particularly hard when that person takes their own life. There are far more questions in those circumstances than reasonable people can come up with answers. It is not something that anyone imagines they will ever experience. And when they do, they can't imagine a pain greater than they know in that kind of unexpected tragedy. There are several things I think are important for us to understand when dealing with a suicide, and especially the suicide of someone we know, someone we love, someone we have treated as a friend and respected. First and foremost, we have no real insight into why. Even if a person leaves a note and offers an explanation, we really don't understand why anybody would come to the point where they saw no other way. It does not help to offer theories as to why. It certainly does not help the family offer your theory as to why this happened. We don't know. God alone understands perfectly. We don't. So please take care with that. It's also important to know that, especially for the family, there is going to be a wide range of emotional responses you will go from complete numbness, the inability to even comprehend that this has taken place, to the other end of the spectrum where you will be so angry at Tracy you don't know how to think. And those are all normal. Those are how we respond to that kind of loss. We shut down because emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically, our bodies protect ourselves from the shock. And we experience the grief and the pain and, yes, the anger when we are better able to face them. And I need to say a word about anger. It is both a very common and a very normal response when someone takes their own life. We are angry at ourselves because we didn't see this coming. We are angry because nobody picked up on it. And we are angry with a person who took their life. 
because they have inflicted a pain that few people can know and no one wants to bear. It doesn't mean that we hate them. It doesn't mean that we resent them. It just simply means we are angry at a situation that we have no power over. And it's part of our normal human feeling to feel that. As a community, as people who knew Tracy and who worked with him, who were friends with him, we are all probably questioning, what did we miss? Did we not see this coming? And if we did see this coming, how could it have happened? I thought things were better. And again, there are no easy answers for that either. The important thing is to remember that you did what you could. You cared for him, you loved him, you supported him. And his final act in this life was something that, unless you were standing right there, you had no control over. And his family, his wife and his children, his grandchildren, his sisters and brother, they are in a kind of pain that is hard to describe. The best care that we can give to people in such times is to simply be there for them, to give them the hug if they need it, to listen to them, to do what we can do at their request, but not to offer theories, ideas, and certainly, unless you have personally experienced the death by suicide in your family, never to say to them, I know how you feel. Because you don't. You can't begin to. It is better simply to be present in love and in grace. As to Tracy's relationship with God, and whether or not he is at peace in the Lord, we leave that in the hands of God. No one among us is fit or able to make that judgment. We simply cannot, and we should not. We leave them in the hands of God. For that's where they were the whole of their lives, and even if in the last moments, they could not believe that they were lovable. They still were, and God still loved them. And there's one other group I want to talk to. Those of you who have experienced a family suicide, it brings it all back. Everything, every detail, every emotion, every experience that you experienced when you lost a family member to suicide comes back. You remember the day, the moments, all the emotions and feelings. It can take you back and cause you to lose ground because we never truly get over the death of those we love. And especially a death by suicide is something that is particularly challenging to get beyond. In all of these things, we want to be as supporting and as loving of one another as possible. This is not a time for speculation, a time for guessing, a time for talking to one another about what it must have been that caused it. It is now a time to pray. Pray for God to love and support Tracy's family. Pray for God to heal us as a community. Pray for God to open our hearts and our eyes to see the things around us that might hint that somebody is carrying a burden that's becoming too difficult for them. And pray for the courage to reach out to someone who we believe might be struggling. It would be far better to reach out and to find out that they are not in that deep of trouble and they aren't struggling that hard and they can get by rather than to simply hope someone else pays attention and no one does. I have experienced far too many of these events in my many years as a pastor. They never get easy. It never gets painless. You never get used to it. And because of that, I know I have to rely upon God even more. And I hope and pray that all of us can do the same. We place Tracy in God's hands. 
We surround his family with our love and support. And we open our ears and our hearts to listen. I invite you to pray with us. Heavenly Father, this is a difficult time for us in our town. We are confused, we are hurt, we are angry, we are frustrated, we are brokenhearted. Someone we know and love and care about could not bear the weight that was pressing down on him and ended his own life. We ask that you be with his wife and children and grandchildren, with his sisters and brother and all those who knew him and loved him. We ask that you console their hearts, bring into them the peace of heart and mind that can only come from you in a time like this, and make us all attentive to one another so that we see those among us who might be bearing too great a burden and in love and in charity reach out to them, that we might understand that all of our emotions are real emotions and that we will have them. And they do not mean that we do not love less. It simply means that we are only trying to cope with something we can't imagine could have possibly happened. We lay Tracy in your arms, in your care. You have claimed him in baptism and he has been yours throughout his life. We lay him in your arms now and trust to your mercy and your love and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today and we ask you to comfort and console us as we move forward in the days ahead. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. And a final word. If any of you feel the need to talk to someone, to get it off your chest, to seriously come and just vent your emotions, please feel free to call me. My cell phone is 880-6787. I can be available any time or day or night. In a situation like this, there is no bad time of day. All conversations, everything you say will be held in the strictest confidence and it is only yours to share. Let's be there for one another in the love of Jesus. Amen.